Ako pa rin kayo. Alright. So, our topic is all about social media presence creation and let me start with our discussion on Facebook pages and post best practices. Um, a lot of uh, people, especially for MSMEs and freelancers, uh, create their online presence uh, through social media. In fact, some would invest only on social media and not necessarily have their own online presence, meaning they don't necessarily have their own website, but instead focus on social media. However, for this program in the e-commerce and digital marketing mentoring program for MSMEs, we, although we recognize the importance of Facebook pages and its popularity, it is not meant to replace the importance of websites because usually when people see you on their feed and maybe because you advertise, your plugs would appear on Facebook and people might like your page and try to avail whatever products or services you are offering. But still, uh, these people would still uh, rely on um, what they may see on Google search results to have a better understanding of you and what people say about you. They would still search you, especially for those who are very serious in making their purchases. And um, of course, the market is ever competitive. So, and there are still people who will be looking for product suppliers to search while there are some would be contented searching through social media, but it would be better if you can be found on both areas rather than limit yourself to one and be subjected to a competition that is not necessarily uh, equal because you're not sure whether you're dealing with someone who's uh, selling legitimate goods or they're smuggled goods, diba? it happens. And uh, some are also, some have interesting offers that, that are too good to be true as well. So normally, having an online presence gives more or less some sense of transparency and uh, truthfulness, especially if done properly. And, uh, and, and it is also intended to build trust you know, to the person who is uh, viewing the site. Now, for this session, we're going to talk about uh, Facebook pages, the post formats that you can use. We'll also talk about how can you define preferred audience, your page insights, how can you boost posts and other page features. Afterwards, um, I'm going to also use other platforms, but instead of uh, having slides about them, we're just going to look at Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Google Plus, and talk about the various features of the platform, including Pinterest and Instagram, so that we can have uh, a more or less... Uh, rounded discussion of this topic. So why Facebook pages and how Facebook pages can help you? So Facebook pages, you can use this so that you can reach people on various devices. Uh, nowadays, a big, part, a big part of people who visit social media platforms are accessing them through mobile. So that is why we invest in having an online presence through Facebook, having Instagram, and sometimes we even invest in having our own apps. And for Facebook, there is currently around 1.65 billion people that are active using mobile. And in the Philippines, uh, a big majority also of Facebook users are active on mobile. For Instagram, 500 million people are active on mobile. And you have this amount for applications. So the amount spent on mobile is currently more than 20%. So you can use uh, Facebook, particularly pages, to create your online presence for free. Anyone can create a Facebook page, although that is a beauty in a sense that it is very democra democratic, it is open to everyone. But it can also be a challenge, especially for brands that are carried by multiple agents. For example, for real estate entities, multi-level marketing, uh, products that have distributors, among others. Usually, their sales agents or sales force would be creating their respective Facebook pages, carrying the same name. So there are instances when there are instances where instead of being able to provide clarity to people in in terms of being a source of information, you might end up still confusing more people because you're not really sure whether this is the official page or not. And I'm sure you've experienced that no? uh, with the many pages that you've seen online. So if you are a brand and let's say you have sales agents, sales force that are carrying your products and services, it is best that part of the agreement before they 
as, as soon as they, as they sign up with you, you need to have some sort of a social media policy uh, dictating that, okay, there's only one official Facebook page. You can create your own pages, but you cannot use the brand name uh, because it's really important to protect the brand name and then um, and give them guidelines also on what they can post and what they cannot post because the last thing that you want is for your salesperson to make claims that are not backed up but are being made so that they can sell. A good example of this one, I remember have uh, encountering in one of my seminars last year, um, like they were trying to sell uh, milk. Now, this milk is a, is a pricey uh, milk. No? I think that's a 2,000 yata siya per can. No? Pero parang they were, they were marketing it to people with special uh, pop qualities, meaning children with special qualities or with special needs. No? And then when and then, nung lumalabas na yung mga marketing campaigns niya, parang gumagamit siya ng mga pictures ng mga bata na, let's say, may bumili, pupicturean niya nakasama yung hawak yung milk, kapos ginagawa niya itong campaign. And uh, medyo naging challenging yon, kasi may mga guidelines tayo insofar as what are the things that you can post or not. And this is what I've always been saying, that for MSMEs, and for freelancers managing social media presence, it's not just about the technical know-how of how to post that matters, but what matters also is uh, making sure that you are doing it right. Because if you're not doing it right, especially if you are a freelancer maintaining this online presence, it's gonna reflect back on you, no? Kasi ikaw nagmamanage yan eh, kapos ko ikaw yung gumagawa na, yung pinopost mo pala, mali pala, against the law pala, against advertising policies, it will also reflect uh, back bad on you. Now, for MSMEs, maybe because of their intention to sell, uh, they may be more aggressive than usual in trying to position their products. MSMEs also have to be uh, a bit cautious, especially if they hire people na very aggressive yung mga na-hire nila. They have to remember that they're still accountable to what that person is posting for them. Okay? So having a Facebook page shows people that you're ready for business. It, Facebook allows you to uh, put content and this content is searchable uh, because Facebook also has its own search bar where people can search for content. Uh, content can come in the form of posts. You can, you can view results in terms of posts, videos, posts by friends, posts by the public, including pages. Now your pages, especially if you are a a brand or an establishment that has office hours that can be visited, then you can put your operating hours, contact information, you can put details about what your business is all about, and you can put as much information as you can in terms of your product services and how to get there, and including a link to your website. So you cannot say that, uh, pwedeng wala na akong website, Facebook page na, pero actually si Facebook page, meron siyang field para malink mo rin yung website mo. Kaya maganda, nakumpleto siya. People may sometimes argue na parang nababaliwala yung website ko kasi parang feeling ko once I started uh, putting the description of my business, services, products, menus, directions, and more, it's like putting major components of my content from the website to the page. That's okay. But, you know, you cannot guarantee that a person will be navigating through to everything that you have posted on your page. You put them there so that if this person visiting your page really wants to know more about you, really wants to know the products and services that you are offering, at least um, you put enough information to make to make the decision, the purchasing decision, a lot easier for this person. Or at least you improve the consideration phase of the decision process of this person. And uh, and the same can also be said insofar as your website. Is concerned and of course on your website there will be much more i think what you want to make sure is that your pages have more content in comparison to your website of course in pages we post daily we post inspiring quotes that we don't necessarily have to post on our websites but we have to make sure that whatever we post will be relevant enough so that um bakaka decide din naman yung person kung ano yung itatakon parang ano yung um mga ino offer mo no Okay, 
And you also have an area where you can put your photos. So make sure that the photos that you will use are owned by you and that will put the best presentation of you. In fact, on the header and on the profile picture, you can now actually uh, post videos. No? Diba? Pwede ka na mag-post ng profile picture at header na, na images. Ay, sorry, na, na video. So let's, let's see if we can... If you can try to open one. Medyo, ano eh, naga, ano yung ating internet? I'm not so sure what's happening. But, uh, tignan natin si Subi the Souvenirs. So, si, si Subi the Souvenirs, yan o, kita nyo, yung kanyang header ay video. So, slow motion, pinapakita niya kung paano sinusuot yung kanyang napsak bag. And then, at the same time, makapansin nyo, um, may mga, ibang, iba, may mga effects pa siyang ginamit, no? Para mapakita niya yung kanyang, kanyang pinaka-prime na product. So, so that is one way that you can use your header. So, parang instead na parang maglagay ka lang ng isang still na image, pwede kang gumawa ng video na very short, Pero i-take advantage mo yung, yung time na the person will look at your page, talagang i-grab mo yung attention niya. Kaya sa akin, believe ako doon sa ginawa niya rito na slow motion pa yung pagkakagawa. No? I, think ang isang exa- I think ang isa pang page na merong video sa header niya, I think it's Jollibee. Tingnan ko nga kung yung pa rin. Uh, ala. Okay. Oh, hindi na. Dati kasi ano to eh. There was a time na animated to eh. Ay, yung parang gumagalaw-galaw. Pero ngayon di na siya gumagalaw-galaw. Pero yung kanina pinakita ko, that is an example na yung header mo, ginawa mong video. So, kaya huwag kayong maglalagay ng video for the sake of putting a video. Ideally, nakasynchronize siya dun sa gusto mong gawin. Kaya parang may, may gusto kang i-achieve na na through the video, mas matutulong ka to achieve it. To achieve it. Like in that case, Subida was trying to sell their napsak bag. So parang pinapakita niya kagad na pag pumunta ka sa page niya, this is our prime product that we want you to know of. At uh, sana tignan niyo siya kung magiging interesado kayo to, to check out our website. So parang ganun yung kanyang uh, messaging. Yun ang impression na binibigay kagad nung kanyang header. Okay? So, you can also showcase your business through Facebook shop. So, one of the things that you can do now through Facebook is that you can post your products. And it also has a services section where you can list your offerings at the top of your page. So, I would suggest taking advantage of this because there are really people due to limited budget would be subscribing to free Facebook alone and uh, would like to see that. Pero, pwede mo rin isipin na Eh kung free Facebook lang ang kaya niyang i-afford at wala siyang time na mag-search, eh baka naman hindi ko siya target market. That can possibly so. Pero pwede mo rin sabihin na talagang practical lang siya o talagang masinop siya pagdating sa aspect na yon. Di ba may mga bagay na parang parang kuripot ka, pero pagdating sa ibang bagay, parang wala kang pakialam kung paano kang gumastos. So, so I would suggest na wag, wag na lang tayo mag-assume no? insofar as our audience uh, is concerned. Now, let's look at some of the page. Meron kasi dapat tayo activity yung what can you say about these pages. Pero siguro pwede pa naman. So, this is an example page of NIX Studio. So, I'm showing the page to you. Can you comment using the chat box? What do you like about the page? Can you share what you think? What do you like about this page? Would you like to share your thoughts for NIX Studio? What do you like about it? Sige, while waiting for your answer, here's another page. So, uh, so ito, here's another look. This is uh, NIX Studio of Thailand. So they have a website. And then their, their Facebook page have photos of the products. They have a shop. Meron din sila mga videos. So, 
at may mga posting sila about the product and of course hindi siya parang parang product catalog lang yung mga social media post niya medyo life lifestyle yung pagkakagawa ng kanyang mga post no so okay sige so this is another one vote for happily unmarried so, parang nagkaroon yata ng brand competition, kaya yun na nakalagay. Pero ang pangalan ng page na to is Happily Unmarried. So, technically, parang these are shot glasses that you can purchase online. So, so it's a Happily Unmarried site where you can buy shot glasses online. Okay? So, what do you like about the page? I think it's obvious na... Para ang immediate attention grabber sa yo is the name itself, no? So parang it's a symbol of uh, being cool with what you are. So para may ganun siya association. Para siguro hindi naman masabi na umiinom lang ay yung mga sawi. <laughs> no? Kaya happily unmarried siya, no? For people who may, who may want to drink. Okay? So happily unmarried is from India, no? And they're using their social media pages to to sell cups, to sell shot glasses. But these have uh, messaging, uh, you know, para bang have a fun life, have, good, have a good time. And then they envelop it under under a, uh, a big brand identity, which is uh, happily unmarried. Para, kasi di ba, misa pag sinabi siya, ay, naku, pang inom-inom lang yan, ba't ka pamibili ng ganyan? So at least, dahil nilagyan mo siya ng branding, parang iba yung Iba yung dating ng mga glasses niya. This one is the fifth. So, the fifth is also a lifestyle brand from Australia. So, what they're selling are watches. And some are formal po photos, but some are also informal photos. So, mga sineshare nila through social media. Okay. Edna Lynn said they have good reviews and ratings, good graphics and presentation. Thank you very much, Edna Lynn. All right. So once you have your Facebook page, Facebook page or pages, depending on how many pages you're going to create, um, of course, you need to start posting the, to build engagement, to build a community. And to make your pages or to make your page relevant to the people who have followed you. Pero syempre from experience, diba? Like when you look at your news feed, ilan lang ang galing sa Facebook page na walang sponsored posts. Yung nakikita mo sa news feed mo, ilan yung page doon na hindi necessarily sponsored posts. With the hundreds of pages that you may have liked since you started using Facebook. So kung tutusin, diba? Kung if you have liked more than 100 pages since you started using Facebook, um, marami sa kanila, almost a big majority don't appear on your news feed, no? So, kaya kailangan nandun yung, kaya, kaya nag engagement tapos kaya si Facebook din, talagang pinupush nila yung mga brands na mag-sponsored post. At kaya rin naman tayo as page owners, talagang constant yung effort natin to invite people to like our page para kahit pa paano. Um, yung mga latest na mag-like ng page mo, sila siguro mas interesado na makakuha ng notification whenever you have new content on your pages. So, there are many ways that you can make a post uh, or your page engaging. So, of course, if people visit your page, it's good that you have a pin post top so that they can see immediately what's important in so far as your page is concerned. And uh, you can also create the right engagement uh, with your customers. So normally, ang ginagamit natin, ang popular na post formats are the uh, photo and video na parang yun ang parang pinaka-popular insofar as Facebook is concerned. Of course, you can post text status, pero ang talagang high ang engagement are photos and videos. Now, for photos and videos, Facebook basically gives you default five options. Upload photos and videos, create a photo album, a photo and video carousel, a slideshow, and a canvas. No? So, yan yung binibigay sa ating uh, option. So, kapag naka-mobile ka, you can make uh, live videos from your page. In fact, kahit sa Facebook group mo, pwede kang gumawa ng Facebook live video. So, sinasuggest siya kasi 
nakaka-increase din siya ng engagement in so far as your page is concerned kasi di ba nakakatanggap ka ng notification o nagbibig nagsha-shout out ka ng notification whenever you are live um so so video format uses a thumbnail with a play icon and then meron lang siyang short line of text above the post outside of the frame so, ito yung parang mga samples, no? And normally, we would like to use videos on social media because uh, videos can help people be further engaged, no? And hindi naman siya ganun ka-obstusive, although depende, no? Napansin ko sa Android, kapag nag, napascroll ka na mayroong video, talaga nag-play siya na may sound. Pero pwede mo namang i-set yung, yung Facebook mo para automatic sound off siya rather than sound on, no? And then, kapag nag-upload ka ng video, pwede mo rin piliin kung ano yung thumbnail na makikita nila. And uh, para at least mapili mo yung best shot na talagang magiging attractive sa person para i-click yung video. And um, of course, may nagtatanong dyan, parang hindi mo pwedeng sa YouTube na lang and then from YouTube, isashare mo siya sa Facebook. Yes, that is possible. Um, pero yun na nga eh, kasi since Facebook already has their own video features, so medyo competitor na ngayon si Facebook and si YouTube. And obviously, Facebook wanted you to post your videos on Facebook instead. In fact, webinars like this, ito, ito mga learning webinars namin. At one time, I really thought of uh, uploading this on Facebook instead of uh, YouTube. Pero I realized para may mga limits in terms of the length of the video para i-allow siya na ma-post siya sa, sa Facebook page. No? Kaya, by default, nakalagay na lang today siya sa YouTube rather than sa Facebook page. And then you can also use the slideshow format. The slideshow format is popular um, kasi alternative mo siya sa video. So, normally, you would use the slideshow format kapag yung if you're assuming that the internet bandwidth of your reader is limited, so, pwede ka na lang mag-shot ng iba, mag-upload na iba't ibang pictures and create a slideshow instead, like this one, no? So, parang nag-animate siya. Alright? So, yan yung uh, pinaka-example niya. Now, ang... So, siguro ito, mas pagplanuhan nyo lang kung ito ang gagamitin yung option, kung ano yung gusto niyo talagang i-upload na pictures para ma-maximize siya at makagrab siya ng attention. Although nowadays, ah, like in Japan, in Thailand, although I haven't seen that yet in the Philippines, marami nagpe-Facebook Live ngayon na nagbebenta ng mga products. Sa atin pwede rin naman eh, kaso I think yung iba kaya medyo natatakot kasi baka mamaya hindi rin naman sila nakaregister, di ba? So baka matakot sila na makita ang dami-dami produkto nasa likod nila eh, tapos eh, baka mamaya peke pa yung binibenta, no? <laughs> so anyway... But uh, in Thailand and in Japan, marami nang gumagamit ngayon ng, ng Facebook Live instead of chatting with people and let them know what they think. They're using Facebook Live instead to communicate yung, ano yung mga pro new products and services that they have on their website or on their store and encourage people to patronize and buy from them or reserve them because they are of limited stocks. Uh, sabi ni Edna Lynn, yep, seen... Lots of that too, especially the oyster shocking for pearls, okay? And then you can also use slideshows. Um, as I mentioned earlier, pwede mo siyang gamitin parang alternative to video kasi parang animation lang siya. So, kaya kung gusto mo magkaroon ng mini video without necessarily shooting a video, you can upload photos and convert them to a slideshow na parang magiging video siya, Okay. And then you can also use the carousel format. So the carousel format also allows you to, uh, to upload a series of images. Pero ang dating sa kanya, hindi siya yung parang photo album na parang maraming pictures na nasa isang album. Ang style niya is para siyang cards na nagro-rotation siya. So pwede mo siyang scroll through. So ideally, if you're gonna use a carousel format, kailangan storytelling yung perspective kapag uh, carousel ang ang gagamitin mong style, no? So, gaday nito, although you may not necessarily agree dun sa order na ginawa niya, pero, di ba, may cup, 
ng coffee, tapos pinakita niya yung galing sa lalagyan, and then may cup na tinitimpla siya, and then meron yung inopen at pinakita yung daman din ng, ng pouch. So, depende sa inyo kung paano niyo siya mas gago, mas i-execute, no? So, wala namang hard and fast rule, pero the best, parang best practices implies na mas maganda kung gagamitin natin siya parang storytelling ang format. Oh, yun. And then, you wanna use carousel kasi nga parang you wanna do a storytelling and then para kang gumagawa ng isang malaking panorama image. And then you can also use the canvas format. So the canvas format is like creating a, a landing page inside Facebook. Um, but the challenge in using this is that um, viewable lang siya sa mobile. No? So kapag kinlik yung first, pag kinlik niya yun, lalaki yan, tapos pag laki niya, uh, magkailangan niya mag-scroll through para makita niya yung laman. So, it can be a series of photos na merong caption, pwede may up, may down, depende do sa behavior na gusto mong i-encourage from the person. Uh, pero hindi nga lang to viewable. Uh, although, I think viewable siya sa desktop, pero yung format niya, mas ma-appreciate mo kapag sa mobile device mo siya, view. Um... Kaya, this is another way, no? Kung gusto mo. Tapos ito, pwede mo rin siyang i-boost as an advertisement na, or i-boost post o pwede mo siyang gawing ads, no? Para people can view it if they want to, if you want more people to get to see the canvas that you have created. Alright? And you want to use canvas if you want to create a mini site experience. So, I'm curious, alin dito ang mas lagi niyong ginagamit and uh, which are you interested to use to use or to try? Of course, karamihan sa ating ginagamit yata yung upload photos and maybe from time to time you also do photo album. Um, I try doing carousel and video carousel pero hindi madalas. Parang hindi ko siya default na instinct. Um... Ganun din sa slideshow. Yung canvas, tuwing nag attempt na akong gawin, talag ko naiisip, kaysa gumawa ko ng mini site sa Facebook, ayusin ko na lang yung website ko at lagyan ko pa siya ng content. Parang ganun naman yung nagiging thinking ko. So, kanya-kanyang bias yan. Pero, if if you are willing to experiment, I would suggest uh, do, doing different type of posts and really experiment on it. no So, sabi ni Edeline, photo and video for me. Now, one of the things that you can do kapag gumagawa ka ng iyong social media presence uh, is that you can identify your preferred audience. Um, you, can, you can enable your Facebook page to be optimized for people who can see it. So, ibig sabihin, pwede pa nag-post ka, especially kung ang, limbawa, kung ang Facebook page mo nasa, parang typically yan nakakakita lang ng post na isang Facebook page, by default ha, parang less than a thousand people, less than a hundred, less than two hundred, or sometimes even less than fifty, depending on the size and nature of your page. So you want to you you may want to use the audience optimization if you want to narrow down your posts. So for example, if I have uh, two thousand people who have liked my page, and then I want to post something that will happen in Tagayan de Oro. Maybe rather than setting my post to be viewable to the public for everyone, I could set it that only people from Tagayan de Oro will be able to see it. So the targeted audience may be small. That's, that's the reality of it. But targeted siya. So maganda siyang gawin kapag talagang gusto mo lang talaga na yung sino lang talaga yung audience na gusto mo makakita. Siya lang yung, maka, siya lang yung makaka, maka, marireach nung what you have posted on your Facebook page. And you can choose your preferred audience um, either by location. You can also do other restrictions like age, gender, location, language. And then you can also uh, choose your preferred audience according to their area of interest. That is if you really, really want to narrow down the people who will get to see whatever you've posted on your page. And then you can also, you will also get the chance to visit your audience insights, no? Kapag ginamit mo yung feature na yan. So at least mas magkakaroon ka ng understanding pa kung ano yung uh, likings ng iyong audience. 
you can also use uh, page insights. So most of the pages, um, uh, most of the platforms, social media platforms that we're using, usually they also have insights na feature that allows you to further optimize your page. So it gives you statistics like page reach, post reach, impressions, um, geography, demographics, lifestyle. You know, ano yung mga posts mo na click ilan yung nag-like, ilan yung nag-unfollow sa page mo in the process. Kasi mataas yun eh. Kasi syempre, lalo na ako yung mga pinag-like mo ng page mo, mga friends mo rin. No? So pag taga-taga, para marirealize sila, ano itong update ako sa page, nakita ko na ito sa profile niya. So pwede yung follow na lang yung page mo. So that's possible. Although the reason why you may want to still add them to, you may still want to invite them on your page is because hindi, mo rin nehesar, hindi ka rin necessarily nakikita nila sa feed. di ba? For those of you who have more than a thousand friends, I'm sure you've noticed that you only get to see like 20 to 50 people on your feed. You don't get to see at least 10% of your friends on your feed, no? Parang 1% lang. So, kaya maganda rin na uh, kung may page ka, invitahan mo rin yung mga friends mo. So, the number of likes over time and from where. And uh, you can also see how the content is performing over time. You can also, if you're doing ads, it will tell you also your post reach, how many of them came from organic traffic and how many of them came from paid traffic. And you can also see uh, engagements, like ilan yung nag-click, kung may nag-comment ba, among others. Uh, pero ang suggestion ko lang sa inyo, huwag kayong basta ma-carried away dun sa mga lumalabas sa stats nyo. Because from experience, like for example, we have an upcoming women leaders uh, bootcamp. So as of last night, as of yesterday, I think we have more than 30 registered already. And I could say that the majority of people who have registered, hindi yan yung mga nag-like nung post announcing the Women Leaders Bootcamp. Yung mga nag-register nag sa kanya are most of them, I don't know. No? O kaya parang, o kaya kakilala ko man sila, pero hindi sila necessarily nag-engage sa online at nagsalita sila or what have you. Kaya wag tayong basta ma-carried away na, ay wala man na nag-like wala man lang nag-comment. Kasi karamihan ng mga decision makers or people making a decision to purchase, they don't necessarily have to engage on social media to make to express their decision to support or attend. No, Only a small percentage uh, does that. The majority uh, make their purchasing decisions quietly, including the research. They do it very, they do it quietly. So, kaya wag tayong ganong makikerried away dun sa mga stats natin um, mag uh, I would suggest you focus on your bigger goal even if your stats are low but if you're achieving your bigger goal in terms of your conversion what have you then you just get to know your audience better and so that you can have a rational um, perspective insofar as the behavior of your purchasing audience instead and then there are other metrics that you can also leverage, including uh, people who have viewed your page. Like if you want to have an idea of how old they are, where are they from, do you have bigger viewers from the women's segment or from the men's segment, and uh, ano yung mga idad nila, um, what day sila mas online, ano yung time na mas nagbibisit, ano yung time na mas online sila. Pero of course, when they are online, um, like yung mga online sa gabi, hindi naman necessarily nag-review ng mga pages yun. Pwede doon sila nakikipag-catch up with their relatives, with their loved ones, talking to their friends. So, we cannot assume that they are there to visit our pages. Alright? So, again, be realistic on that. And then you can also learn about your audience. You can use uh, demo demography graphics. And uh, you can also get yan, mga local insights. Okay? Um, you can also include uh, how many people are nearby your establishment, especially for those of you who have created pages to promote your local establishment. And uh, you can also get to see what content and post types that are working. So yun, depending on the engagement, but as I said, wag tayong ganong magpaka-obsessed dyan. No? And of course, if there are posts that are really doing well and you believe na konting push na lang, baka mas mahit mo na yung results na ini-aim for mo. You can always boost posts. But I don't suggest using that as a priority. Maybe that 
pose is already performing well and you're boosting because mas makakatulong pa siya to further engage it. Sometimes Facebook will give you suggestions to boost a post pero minsan hindi siya magka-qualify kasi puro rin siya text. Kaya kaya kailangan papalitan pa rin natin yung in-upload natin para ma-reflect sa kanya. Okay? All right. So medyo mga wala na tayo dito kapag diniskus natin siya kasi nasa social media presence uh, creation tayo at this point of the topic, no? So, untong tuloy muna natin yung ating discussion. We will have a session on social media advertising at mas pag-usapan natin yan doon. Other page features includes uh, your ratings, reviews. Um, I think sa e-commerce advocate, naka-activate yata yung aming ratings and reviews. Yung mga ibang pages ko, hindi ko na ganong inactivate siya. Kasi hindi ko sure if I really need it. No? Depende siguro kung what I'm doing to the point na kailangan kong i-define, i-activate siya. Pero depende sa inyo, if you're seeing that having ratings and reviews will will increase your product credibility, then do so. Wala namang masama. No? Pero kung, pero don't feel obliged, especially if you don't feel that it suits or it fits your your page, no? or depending on what you do on your page. So through settings, pwede mong i-allow yung visitors to review you or you can also disable reviews. Yung aming e-commerce advocate project, meron siyang uh, review. No? And then you can also add a call to action button at the top of your page so that uh, encouraging people to take action. So you can ask, pwede mong i-activate yung call now, send message, contact us, book, book now. Use app, play game, shop now. So, depende sa inyo kung yung pipiliin nyo. And then, pwede mag-trigger siya for an appropriate action. Okay? So, alright. Sige nga, can we do a quick quiz? If you're trying to create a customer database, anong button ang pipiliin mo? If you want to If you want customers to come to your event, what button do you need to use? If you have a sale at your online store this weekend, what button are you going to use? Yung call to action buttons kasi, you can, hindi naman siya permanent eh. You can update that as often as you want, depending on what your campaign is all about. So, so it depends, I, I guess, kung ano yung campaign mo for the month or for the week. I want to find people interested in my service. So, ano yung call to action button na dapat yung PDM? So, do you have some choices kung ano yung gagamitin nyo. I think if you're trying to to create a customer database, then getting them to contact you is one. Uh, they can also send you a message kasi automatic. You will know the person. So in the process, you can, you can add them to your database. If you have an event, uh, if you want people to come to your event, then pwede sila mag-sign up to your event. Um, if you have a sale on your e-commerce store, then you can click on Shop Now. Pwede Shop Now siguro, yung ating call to action button. If you want to find uh, people interested in your service so that you can set up a meeting with them, you can you maybe you want to use the uh, the Book Now. Okay, and contact us, no? So, para maka-reach out ka. You can also block words. So, minsan kasi may mga spam, no? So, pwede ka mag-block ng mga words. Like, yung mga, may mga words na ayaw. Kasi di ba dati, naalala ko, I don't know kung nakita niyo, dati na uso yung poop icon. So, pag nag-type ka sa comments mo na poop, yung lalabas na comments, yung icon na poop, yung talagang drawing na poop pero animated siya. So, parang pinag nung lumabas siya, marami natuwa sa kanya. So, they started leaving comments on pages or what people have been posting. Itatry nila yung poop na icon. Of course, alam mo naman na people were just having fun. Pero, it depends, no? It might create a negative impression on your page. Baka they might have a diff they might they might have a different meaning for posting that, no? Kaya, yun, pwede ka mag-block. So, pwede ka mag-block ng mga words na in relation to poop. Uh, any bad words na parang you feel na you're not accommodating it because you're, you don't have any intention 
of using those words in your post. Like, halimbawa, kung, di ba, may mga tao na panagpo sa social media, they don't mind kahit na magmura sila kasi parang whole lang yon sa kanila and they don't mind people commenting like that on their page. Pero kung ikaw, you don't see that to be in your vocabulary in terms of the content and how you're gonna reply to people, then you can also block those words. It's your page anyway, so you can set the rules as you want them. You don't have, kumbaga at the end of the day, parang bahay mo siya. So, ikaw ang nagsiset ng rules sa bahay mo. No? So, think of it that way. So, you can set also a profanity filter, whether yeah, medium or strong. So, sa akin, ang profanity filter ko ay strong. Alright? So, um, so, we've tackled Facebook pages. So, like in this case, we're looking at to be the souvenirs. So, dahil meron siyang physical store, yung kanyang about section, nakalagay yung kanyang address, contact number, link sa kanyang website, price range, operating hours. Uh, sino yung, now, Facebook allows you to display team members on your site and then um, and get to know more about the page. No? So, yan yung nakikita natin sa kanya ngayon. No? Okay? Now, let's look at other social media platforms and let's start with Twitter. Uh, Twitter, hindi na tayo nakalangin. So, si Twitter, para rin siyang Facebook page. Your profile, you can have a header and then you can put information about yourself and link to your location, to your website and then you can also post uh, photos and uh, post updates. Uh, you can also retweet posts from other people. So, pag sinabi natin uh, retweet, so halimbawa, meron ka nakitang post na parang maganda naman siya. So, halimbawa, gusto ko tong video na to ni David Hay, siya yung nagbigay sa amin ng pass. So, kung gusto kong matandaan yung mga nilike ko, pwede kong i-like siya. Tapos, kung gusto ko siyang i-retweet, i-click ko yung retweet. So, kapag kinlik ko na yung retweet, ang mangyayari dyan, uh, lalabas na siya sa wall ko. No? So, yung post niya, parang shinare ko siya. So, parang this is one way of you uh, sharing your inf sharing your influence uh, to the causes of others. Kaya, ingat din tayo sa pag-re-retweet, sa mga pag -re share Kailangan talaga piliin natin kasi halimbawa, kapag sobra-sobra ka namang mag-retweet, mag-re-share, pwede yung mga tao rin, mabwisit din si mga pinupost mo at iyan follow pananda no kaya kailangan um, piliin din natin siya okay so through your profile yan so pwede kang maglagay ng mga iba't ibang posting uh, in my case i'm using a platform called uh, paper.ly para automatic meron akong newsletter every day that appears on my website so kahit sa akin twitter feed so meaning even if I don't have time to update my Twitter feed on a regular basis, meron akong newsletter. So, for example, um, ito siya, si paper.ly. So, every day yan. Uh, pwede ko naman siyang i-edit or i-modify. Dati talagang I really take time to modify. And then, normally, kapag gusto kong mag-research, uh, isa to sa mga tinitingnan ko. No? So, ayan. So, parang gumagawa siya. So, in fact, a lot of people really think na ako yung nag naglalagay ng lahat ng content. Hindi na yan, Sarli. Para nag-set ka lang ng mga keywords and then um, mag-generate na siya ng content based on those keywords. Ang challenge ko lang, palagi ako napapasukan ng mga foreign language. Kaya normally, kapag ina-update ko to, binubura ko yung mga yan. Kasi syempre, ultimo ako, di ko siya maintindihan. No? So, so, this is one way of... Um, of uh, creating content for your Twitter feed. Saka mapapansin mo, kapag, dahil kumukuha rin siya ng content from the people you follow, nag-ano rin siya, no? Nag-shout nag out siya, thanking people for the content that they have shared. Kaya kung tutusin, may mga followers na rin itong, itong uh, newsletter na to. I have two newsletters. Yung isa yung Digital Influencer. And then, meron akong e-commerce entrepreneur. And I think I have one also on leadership. No? So, tapos if you want to see the past issues, click nyo lang yung archive, yeah, makikita nyo na rin yung mga past issues para kung gusto nyo ma-view yung mga iba pang content. And then, um, one of the things that you can also do with 
Twitter, you can create lists, you can create moments, at meron din siya tinatawag na analytics. So, through analytics, it will tell you kung ano yung top tweet mo for the month. Although, it's too early because March 2 pa lang yata ngayon. Lama, di ba? March 2 pa lang ngayon. March 2 ba? March 3. Ah, sorry. March 3 pala, no? So, sino yung top follower mo for the month? And then, uh, kamusta ang profile visits mo, mentions mo, followers? And then, like ito, for the month of February, top tweet. And then, top mention. Top mention, maybe... Because this person, nagkaroon kami na mas mahabang engagement. And then, ano yung top na media tweet? Yung mas maraming nag-respond. And then, it will give you a, an indicator of how many tweets, profile visits, uh, new followers that you gain for the month. So, tuloy-tuloy yan. Kapag in-scroll through mo siya, tuloy-tuloy mo nakikita yung data mo. So, kahit pa paano, maganda naman siya. Kasi may mar- meron siya mga information na sineshare. Na pwede mong gamitin din as insight para ma-improve mo pa yung content ng iyong uh, Twitter feed. Now, normally, if you, hindi ganun kadali mag-generate ng following sa Twitter. You really have to, uh, of course, apart from inviting people to follow you on Twitter, um, the one of the best ways talaga is to really engage people, interact with them. You can also, kasi like sa akin, kapag nakikipag-interact sa akin yung person, malaki yung possibility na ifa-follow back ko siya. Kasi, very few people do that now on Twitter, yung para nag interact Para bang everybody was just posting, hindi nakikipag-interact. So, now, kung merong interaction, kadalasan din, talagang magamit ka rin ng hashtag. For example, ano to? La Luna, the final battle. Um, because I was, we were in Davao yesterday, no? At kagab- late night na kami nakarating. So, parang... Parang ang nangyari na lang eh hindi ko na siya hindi ko na napanood. So pwede kong tingnan kung ano yung mga yung mga pinag-uusapan nila. Okay. All right. So mukha marami na disappoint dun sa ending ng Lalo na Sangre. <laughs> okay, so hahanapin ko yung video na yan. So, kung halimbawa na nanood ka ng Laluna Sangre, yan, pwede kang makisali, no? Gamitin mo yung hashtag, Laluna the Final Battle. And of course, if you click on it, then you can interact. Halimbawa, kung nag-agree kayo kay B-Boy, then pwede kang makipag, pwede kang sumagot sa kanya. So, I'm sure si B-Boy tumaas ang following niya as a result of this, kasi syempre nag-ano siya, no? Okay. So, ayan. Character was not even explained well. Disappointing ending. Siya yung pinakamalaking question mark sa show and so many inconsistencies na kakainayang. Uh, tapos, yeah, maraming bitin. Okay. Yeah, so anyway, so mukhang maraming galit ng mga fans. <laughs> Marami akong hindi napanood kagabi. No? So, ayan. So, ito naman. Sino to? Nico, Nico Main at 23. So, ayan yung mga topic-topic nila. Okay? So, mukhang... Ah, birthday pala ni Main Mendoza ngayon. So, kung gusto mo makigreet kay Main Mendoza, yan, pwede kang mag-post ng uh, Nico Main at 23. Mag, mag, mag-birthday greeting ka. Para, yan, masasama ka dun sa mga nag interact At yung mga talaga nag-monitor sa kanya... Lalo na kapag maganda yung pinost mo, pwede nilang i-share. Alright? So, there are many ways that you can go about it para tumasa engagement mo at following mo through social media. Pero kailangan lang talaga matyaga ka. I remember when I was new on Twitter, I really invested a lot of time uh, tweeting about events. Halimbawa, nasa isang live event ako. Palay ko itatanong, anong hashtag? And talagang gagawin ko na makikipag-interact, na makikipag-interact ako. Kapag may speaker na alam ko may, may Twitter, itatag ko siya kapag nag-tweet ako. So in the process, yung speaker mismo, eh, dahil yung pinost ko ay kung ko sa kanya, i-retweet niya rin yung pinost ko. No? And more often than not, nagpa-follow back siya. So doon ako unti-unti nag-build ng following. Kaya yung pag tinatanong ng tao, kapag kung paano mo na-build yung following mo, yung umabot na siya ng 13,000. Um, ano yan, ganun lang yung ginamit kong strategy. Talagang tweet lang ng, pag, pag nasa mga live events, talaga nag-tweet, gumagamit ang hashtag, I tag people that I know na may Twitter account na nandun sa event. 
and post pictures, tag them. So, talagang pakita mo na you're interested in having that relationship and in the process, build that connection. Okay? Don't follow for the sake of following. I think it's best to follow people that because you believe that you have a lot to learn from them. No? And that pakita mo rin na they're following you because you have a lot to offer. Okay? So, I think importante yon na premise. All right? Meron ba tayong question sa Twitter? Okay, so the last one that we're gonna check is uh, LinkedIn. Although I must admit na medyo bias yung LinkedIn ko kasi naka-premium account ako sa LinkedIn. Pero I think even if you're not on premium account, there are a lot of things here that you can do. So you can go to your LinkedIn. One of the things that you can do on your LinkedIn is that you can create a customized header. Uh, para tansyahin nyo na lang yung size niya kasi minsan yung LinkedIn headers na sinasabi nila. Pag nilagay mo dyan, di naman siya talaga nagpifit. I think ang, what I ended up using yata was a Twitter header size. No? So tingnan nyo na lang. Normally, may mga ini-indicate naman siyang size. So ang suggestion ko, yun ang i-follow mo na format. And then you will have a dashboard report, which is normally private to you, like how many people have visited your posts, how many, how many times have you appeared on search appearance, and how many people viewed your profile. What, what I would suggest, even if hindi kayo naghahanap ng trabaho, kung gusto nyo tumaas ang iyong search appearance, i-turn on yung open kayo for careers. Kasi if you are open for career opportunities, mas lalabas ka sa search results. So kung gusto mo tumaas yung post views mo, then I would suggest that you turn, turn on nyo yung maging viewable kayo for career opportunities. Kasi ano pa rin siya, post views pa rin siya. So pwedeng hindi ka mag-qualify dun sa hinahanap niya. Either you're overqualified o hindi ka match sa kanya or you're underqualified. But still, lumabas ka. No? For all it's worth, malay mo in the future meron siya opportunity na mabigay sa'yo. Then at least pumasok pa dun sa radar screen uh, nung person na yon. It will also tell you your articles and activities. It will also tell you your followers. So, pwede ka mag-post ng articles sa LinkedIn at pwede ka mag-post na iyong activity and then you can talk about your experience. Now, when you log your experience on LinkedIn, one of the things that you can do is that you can add media. So, yung add media, pwede ka mag-link sa, like in this case, nag-link ako dun sa, in-announce ko yung aking pagiging independent executive director for the John Maxwell team. So, ang nilink ko dito yung page ko. When I was a, ito, yung as co-founder and data protection officer of iMetrics, ang nilink ko yung aming e-commerce index uh, 2017 reports. Uh, dito naman sa John Maxwell, ang mapansin nyo, 8 yung media na nakalink. So, yung mga webinars na ginawa namin for the various topics ng libro, various books that we have featured, uh, nakalink siya dyan, no? Sa Fascinate, ganun din, niligyan ko rin siya ng dalawang link. I think ang isa sa mga pinakamaraming links na nalagyan ko, yung nagkaroon kami ng podcast. So, there was a time, um, nagkaroon, nag, nag-podcast ako before eh. Ito, yung Digital Filipino Talks. Noong 2011, nag-produce ako ng more than 40 plus videos, or in this case, 47 videos so I would have a video appearing every day and I was interviewing people. So there was a time nag organize ako ng shoot. Um, weekly, nag rent ako ng crew and then we do it at a restaurant na client ko. And then we do it in the morning. So at that time, we were using uh, Le Vistrover. So ayun, doon kami nag-shoot doon sa mezzanine. So lahat ng mga videos namin, lahat ng mga na-interview ko, nakalagay siya dyan. Kaya lang yung nga lang, 2011, I think was too early then. And then, doon ko rin na-realize na um, since this in- industry is very niche, ang manonood lang din nung video ko ay yung mga taga-industry din. No? So, parang hindi siya for the public uh, per se. No? Pero still, I think, uh, parang proud naman ako na nagawa ko siya at na-try ko siya. No? At uh, marami akong na-generate na content in the process. I tried uploading some of them on YouTube also, kaya lang, parang pagtagatagal, sabi ko, nasa Vimeo na naman siya, viewable naman siya. So, ba't ko pagagawin? Ito, yung mga mga videos din. No? So, kada position mo, 
wag mong baliwalain yung ability mo na pwede ka mag-add ng media links. So, usually, these are links to your website or I think pwede rin niya pang graphics eh. Pero maganda pa rin talaga kapag links papunta sa sa website mo. no? Of course, you can also amplify your volunteer experience, education, awards, if any. Uh, kung wala ka pang recommendations, you can ask to be recommended. But, but please remember, don't get recommendations from people that you never got the chance to work with them in the first place. Kasi it's so inauthentic. Like for me, um, from time to time, I get a recommendation request. Parang they were asking me to recommend them. Tapos sabi ko, um, pag binabasa ko, parang connection ko siya sa LinkedIn, pero I've never worked with, with them or I've never worked with her, I've never worked with him before para magkaroon ako ng basis para i-evaluate ko siya. Kasi pwede naman kayong you've never worked together. Like, alimbawa, may mga taong nagbigay ng testimonial sa akin. Kasi nakita ni pero ang basis na ng testimonial is based on the, the content that I post on Digital Filipino. So parang yun yung basis nila when giving their recommendation. Okay lang yun, no? Pero ang hirap, if they're expecting something back, eh kung wala naman akong exposure to whatever content they are posting, uh, ano, parang ang hirap din mag-give back, no? Kaya, kaya pagtagal-tagal din ako nanghihingi ng recommendation. Humihingi na lang ako dun sa, ka- sigurado ako na kaya kong ibalik yung recommendation. Kasi sigurado ako na I've worked with them before and I have uh, something to say from them. So, uh, na- may, may funny experience ako dito kasi uh, umabot ako ng more than, nung magsimula ako dito sa LinkedIn, parang when I tried the recommendations uh, feature, umabot yata ako ng mga more than 100 plus recommendations right away. And then there was a website before na ranking ng mga SEO experts. And funny enough, pumasok ako sa top 5 na ranking. Ang basis niya ay LinkedIn. At yung basis ng ranking sa LinkedIn is on the number of recommendations that you have. Kaya wag yung i-underestimate yung power ng recommendations because people, um, you may also get rank um, not just on how optimized your page is, but you may also be ranked from the perspective na gano ka dami ang recommendations na meron ka sa page mo. Kaya sa akin, kung may nagbibigay na lang ng recommendations, yun, I make an effort na lang din na ibalik yung effort ng pagbibigay nila ng uh, recommendations. Okay? So, other things that you can do, um, ano pa ba yung pwede natin makita? So, meron kang three stats dito, post views, search appearance, at saka who viewed your profile. So, yung who viewed your profile, pag kindik mo yan, makikita mo kung sino yung mga tao nag-view ng profile mo. It will give you their their names, kapos makikita mo yung um, number of profile views mo over time. And then, meron din siyang tiyatawag na uh, post views. So, yung post views, uh, parang sinasabi niya sa iyo kung gano'n karami ang nagbasa. So, for example, itong article, I wrote something before about superlative claims. So, pag kinik ko yan, 331 clicks, yan, sasabihin niya sa akin. One click from Ship Electronic, four from the John Maxwell team, one from Compumatrix, Knowledge IO, and one from Meco. Four have the job title of a speaker, founder, yan. So, ano yung from NCR, Netherlands, Calabarso, Mimaropa, Las Vegas. And your article was found through Facebook. And then the next one was found through LinkedIn. And then, kapag sa post naman, depende ko ano yung mga pinopost mo. So halimbawa, nagpost ako ng update before that I was in Davao. So kapag hindi ko yan, kasabi niya sa akin, okay, uh, two people viewed your post from Home Credit Philippines, RTI International, so City Hardware, Willis Towers, uh, Watson. Now, normally, sa mga sales, although ito due to lack of time or maybe commitment din on my part, hindi ko na siya nagagawa. Pero one of the things that you can do, um, alimbaba, meron kang pinos at nakita mo marami nag-review ng pinos mo. Uh, that is an ano, insight na from you, no? Oh, may mga tao palang interesado sa ganitong content. Sino bang kakilala ko taga Home Credit Philippines? Sino bang kakilala ko taga RTI International? Taga SUS? Taga City Hardware? Or taga Wills Tower, Watson, taga store specialist, Airbnb, Mindski, Alcon, no? So, pwedeng sila yung mga padalhan ko ng invitation. Or, mag-take na ako ng initiative uh, to reach out to them, no? So, for example, we made a post about the leadership game. So, ganun din. 
uh, although ito wala pang nakalagay na companies, no? Maghanap tayo na may nakalagay na companies. So, halimbawa, dito, may taga Accenture, ANC, Microsoft, BAR, Rule Life UK. So, these are possible candidates na pwede kong i-approach at i-offer ko sa kanila na mag-leadership game sila if they are interested in doing a leadership game. So, yun yung mga opportunities na pwedeng makuha mo kung alam mong gamitin yung yung Facebook Ah, sorry, yung LinkedIn insights mo. But of course, you don't have to tell the person na, ay, napansin ko may nag-review sa inyo. Oh, parang, parang mo, di naman maganda yon. So, pwede mo na sabihin na, uh, we're doing this, uh, I, I was, it was referred to me na baka you might be interested in playing the game, gusto niyo ba mag-host ng isang, ng isang game, no? So, pwede sumulat na ako, targeted, rather than writing to everyone. I would just prioritize uh, companies who really made, who really saw the post and who may have uh, expressed interest on the content uh, that was shared. So another another example, so ang isa sa may pinakamalaking views yung pag-announce ko as independent executive director of the John Maxwell team. So yung 1,297 yan. So ganun din. So pwede yung sulatan ko to, yung Baker McKenzie, RCG, Red Track Security, Accenture, Converges, ADB, Smartcom, EY, Circles Life. Pero ang ipaprioritize ko ay yung mga nasa connection network ko kasi um, more or less nasa network mo sila kaya may nag-click na isa o dalawa sa kanila kapos nakita nila ng peers nila kaya maaaring nakita rin nila. No? So yan yung binibigay sa iyo ng iyong uh, LinkedIn Insights. Although your challenge in if you are not on premium, there are may mga limited kang magagawa, no? Like halimbawa, hindi ka basta-basta makakapag-message or makakapag-add ng kahit sino. Kaya kahit kaya kahit na medyo pricey yung premium membership ng LinkedIn, I decided to invest on it kasi parang ayokong malimit nung feature na 'yon, no? And uh, of course, makakatanggap ka ng mga notifications no? na pwede mo rin gamitin at, gamit, at mas maano mo pa siya para mas makipag-interact ka sa iyong target audience. Alright. So, thank you again for joining us today. My apologies at nag-start tayo ng medyo late dahil dun sa ating internet connection. And we're now opening the floor to questions if there are any. Thank you.